Thank you to the lovely lady who always who tells us that. Okay, sorry. Back to funding. So um, in 2018, the city came to us. They had set aside money. It was about $2 million for demolition and the rebuild. Um, that money, as far as we can tell, in 2021 was reallocated to things like, you know, potentially paving and some other things in the city. And it was replaced with ARPA money. ARPA is American Rescue Plan funding. It's expiring at the end of 2024, December 2024, but it's not in contract. So these funds have a timeline, have a, have a, have a deadline on them. Um, in particular, we started out with $6 million in funding, and the city has reallocated some of that funding because Cowley is, as we know, stalled out, hasn't, have, haven't seen much progress on this. There's some concerns, of course, right now that the funding will expire and we will not have to be there. Um, I know that, I think you have an update also, the city has been discussing that million. Right now, Troy Hill Citizens still has two million in ARPA funding for yes. Cowley sitting on the books, right? Yes, that's correct. Great. And reallocation of any of the remaining funds. Got it. So fabulous. So yes. Yes, there's two point five million allocation project that was Perfect. Uh, so our questions uh, to the deputy mayor at the last meeting were, you know, number one, what's the plan for spending this money? Um, the city obviously has a lot of projects on the books. Um, these things take time, we know, but if that money is going to expire, you know, that's kind of a waste of resources for Troy Hill, especially as we've already seen a big reduction in funding. And if that money does expire, what comes next, right? But so if you haven't noticed, uh, Cowley right now, we are on the eve of the 20th anniversary of it closing. That building has been sitting closed for 20 years. It's a key part of the north side, especially East uh, Deutsch Town, Spring Hill, Spring Garden, Troy Hill. Perfect time to revisit this and get some energy behind this and see if we can get some movement. So I would love to turn it over to you and you can give us an update on, on, on the, the progress so far. Sure, happy to. Um, thank you and thanks everyone for the chance to come back and talk about this program. As, as we mentioned, um, there are two and a half million dollars in American Rescue Act or ARPA funds allocated to this project, as well as um, two other sources of funds that total up of less than half a million dollars from other types of programs. Um, we have presently an active, uh, we have active work on this, as discussed in our last meeting and in some of the documentation I had previously, work on going to turn the outcomes of the last community process around demolishing the building and um, can you all hear me now? Great, thank you. Um, so that uh, that plan, which in the the work plan that we provided, that I think you have copies of, um, will take about nine months. On it in the end of March, so we're already underway there, um, and that work is on track. The end result we're hoping for there is a new construction ready uh, estimate of scope, or uh, 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 a new construction ready plan for the facility and a hard budget for what it will cost. Um, what we're working from there are the outcomes of the previous community process. So the, the things that the community discussed as should be included in the new facility is what they're working from. And they wanna have a firm plan for what that will look like and what it will cost. We will come back to you with the outcomes of that plan, of, the, of that, yeah, that feasibility study. The purpose of it is, is not to change anything that you've already talked about. I know there was a lot of input that went into that and some folks have positive feelings about that outcome and, and some have still have lingering questions. We are working from the outcomes of that previous community process to determine what is next. And we have that and we have a uh, uh, construction ready plan as well as cost, then we can address lingering about budget. Um, the two and a half million in ARPA funds the project as well as other funds uh, uh, I think that 20,000 in one um, allocation and uh, another 100,000 that remain active actually. Um, it, those 
will all support and certainly cover the cost of getting us that far. And then when we know what it costs to build a new facility, we can figure out um, what other funds need to be pledged to the project. In the six-year capital plan of the city, there is, to give you all just sort of a, a benchmark, over $12 million in 2024 for recreation facility improvements. We don't connect those funds to a particular project until the year before. So um, one, we could increase or decrease the amount that's pledged to that line item, but also it will be connected to particular projects in the back half of this year come September and October. So there's a lot of uh, money in the city's normal capital cycle both borrowed money, which is bond funds, and uh, uh, operating funds, which are called PAYGO in the capital budget, to support a variety of rec center projects. And uh, we, we know that requests for this project will come as this project is completed if we're planning for that. But until that work is complete, we don't know the exact number. Um, the shift of ARPA funds was to reflect the fact that the existing ARPA funds will take us at least the remainder of this year and next year to spend, which is what I came here last uh, time to talk about. But um, as that plan, which is underway and moving along on schedule is completed, uh, that will inform how we figure out how to budget for the rest of the project and we will move forward from there. We are committed to the project. Can I ask some questions on behalf of all of us and all yeah. everyone else chime in? Is that cool? Uh, okay, so confirm or deny that the building needs to be demolished, demolished just for everybody's hearing. It's best. As our analysis says, it needs to be demolished. It cannot be um, refurbished in anything close to the kind of money we have to put to it. Um, in your scope of work, however, there is a question about whether you may reuse parts of the foundation or the retaining walls that are in existence in the current building plan. Correct? Like if that if yes. those if a, that will parts of the existing building's foundation might need to be preserved to hold the road up. Right. So 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 that's true. Okay. That's not the same thing as reusing Reusing. the entire structure. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Just to add on to that, if I remember correctly from last time, that was part of the reasoning behind the second feasibility study is that the question of what part of the existing structure or wall or foundation is needed to be preserved yes. is a big is a big part of the reason the second feasibility study was necessary. Is that correct? Yes, thank you. That is okay. correct. Um in advancing the prior process, we learned a lot more about the ways in which a piece of the foundation of the existing building is holding the road up, and we need engineering analysis to um, figure out how we best do that. So I, I believe that it's most likely that we will have to preserve that piece of the building, meaning part of its foundation wall, to prevent the road from collapsing. Uh, but otherwise, the plan is not to preserve the vertical part of the structure. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, so obviously, you said your work, you were current. The feasibility study is currently underway. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, we, we, we so it, it, this will okay. sound strange, but it takes us about two months from the beginning to the end of the internal process of developing the scope of work for that mm -hmm. study. That's actually the one single longest piece of it because we want to make sure that every, once we bid the work out to an engineer, they only do what was in the contract. So we have to make sure that every possible thing we want them to evaluate, look at and respond to us on is in that scope. Okay. So we've been working on that since the beginning of March. It typically takes us about two months to turn one of those around. And that's how that's reflected in the phasing that we laid out in the work plan. So we were on track to have that done on schedule. Love that. Uh, and so you said about, the, I think you're from the work plan that takes about nine months, is that correct? Beginning to end. Beginning to end, yeah. including the two months of your, of your work. Correct. Okay. Uh, next question, um, can the ARPA funds be used for that feasibility study or is this being paid for in another way? They can be, but I think we're, we happen to be using different funds to pay for the study, but, yeah. but, but they are eligible to pay for that, yes. Um, is it possible after your scope of work is done, maybe, I mean, like, would you have any interest in starting to spend down those ARPA funds, you know, to actually get that money moving? Like, if you find a contractor who's going to do that scope of work, like, what's your, what's yeah, your, I mean, what's your office's opinion on that? Um, that remains an option. Like, like, like if, 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 if I think what you're asking is if it makes financial sense to use those funds rather than other funds to keep them moving, then yeah, we'll do that. Right. It we, seems like it's going to expire. So like, you know, use, use it or lose it. Right. Basically. That's potentially true. Uh, we know that what they're going to come back with is also going to have 
a big cost and we know that um, some of that work can begin next year. So I, I, I don't, I, okay. I, I understand what you're saying yeah. and it's gonna be another month or so before we have an answer, but yes, I, I, I think that what you're saying is reasonable and not at all inconsistent with where we're headed. Got it. Uh, when we need updates on the project, a lot of the schedule, who can I, who do, who do we need to speak to on a, on a monthly basis to have these updates? No, to see how the study is going. Yeah, I can I can um, make sure you're in touch with the, particularly once this progresses into having a feasibility study underway. I think probably the uh, DPW project manager for the project is the best day-to-day -day contact, and I can make sure you're in touch with them. Wonderful. All right, now I'm going to open it up to the floor. I I got a couple of my, of my pressing <laughs> questions out. Um, it's six fourteen, so we've we've done we're doing great on time so far. And by the way, I just would like to thank your office for spending the time putting this together. Sure. Um, I know that there's been a lot of change, especially related to COVID and the administration, but you can tell that, you know, there's 20 years of feelings related to this. So we have a lot of, I, we have a lot of- I, lot I, 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 I understand that, I respect it. And last night I was in Highland Park where there was 40 years of feelings about a similar project. That's part of the job. So <laughs> don't, thank you, but I got it. Lots of that. All right, who wants, who wants to ask a specific question? Any questions while we have the deputy mayor here and we're, we're thinking about our, the future of Cowley? Oh, David online has his hand up. David, let's let's have you go. Hey, folks, how's it going? Dave Feaster here, 120 Rialto Place. Um, hey, uh, thank you again so much for coming to um, to to speak to us today. Um, I just had a quick question in terms of um, accountability on this because um, I did hear you say something about there's going to be a direct contact in terms of um, you know the ability to contact you folks going forward here. Excuse me. What, what, what? I'm ri I, I'm I'm riding. Um, I'm we are on route to the community center currently for my daughter's dance class. I apologize. Um, and uh, in terms of the account in terms of the accountability piece here, um, I'm I'm just uh, you know, and maybe this isn't so much a question as a statement. Um, I just want to make sure that that is there some way for us to have um, monthly updates, either in an email form or in in terms of um, somebody coming to speak, either to the subcommittee we have on this um, on this project, just to make sure that ever there's full transparency here. Because um, as uh, to reiterate what Abby said, there are a lot of big feelings in this situation, and not just by my daughter in the car right now. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think after this meeting, I'll make sure you have a point of contact who's more in touch with the day-to-day -day workflow on the project, right? Uh, I, everything that I shared, the work plan, the information I shared in March about the finances, and then the updated information that I shared today, you can hold me and the mayor accountable for, and you can hold us accountable for everything. Wonderful. But, um, but, <laughs> but, 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 but on a on a month to month basis as work starts to move, you know, the project manager in DPW is going to have that more granular information. So accountability always, the buck always stops at the top, right? Okay. But, but day-to-day -to -day questions might be better answered by someone more day-to-day -day in touch with the work. Absolutely. So I can make sure that bridge is built. Um, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Sure. I see another hand up online, Lisa, and then we'll see. I'm sure there are questions in the room. Lisa, you want to unmute and ask? Thanks, Abby. Yes, hi, Deputy Mayor. I just want to know who that contact is. Their name, for the record. You know, I, I, I got a. You're, you're testing my knowledge here. I believe the particular um, DPW project manager on this project, at least historically, is his name happens to be Kaz Pellegrini. But um, I will have to check with the director to make sure that's still current because okay. I, I, it's not a friend of mine. But either way, there will be a person who is, uh, has the title of project manager in the facilities division of the Department of Public Works, who does this day to day. Okay, Okay. great. And it, has that person been the point person uh, up until this point? The person whose name I just said, Kaz, has been the point person up until this point. It, it, I'm actually realizing right now as you're asking the question that I can't say for certain whether it remains his project or was reassigned. Mm -hmm. So I have to double check that. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, let's go. We're going to go into the room. We're going to see if there's anybody. I know there was another question online. We're going to come back to that. Anybody in the room want to go? Penny, I see your hand first. Yeah, so it says in here, community engagement is indicated that the plan will be accessible. 
options. Um, we told them what we wanted, and they kept trying to push us with this big one, maybe one or two small rooms, and that's not fair because it's community one. And uh, so I just want to know what do you a building? Heard and understood. I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Uh, I, I, in fact, you saying that right now is the first that it's clear to me that the final option wasn't shared in that process. So, um, so I will have information on which of the options shared in that process is the one we're advancing. And just for transparency, can you make the website about the entire thing? Absolutely, because that's our baseline way to do this kind of thing. So, yes. Who wants to be making the decision on which one you're pursuing? Person makes the decision. Um, the decision is made by the department uh, it, 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 on the basis of the feedback that was received. And that, that engagement happened a while ago. Before I had this job, so I, if I, I, no, I, I only bring that up to say, if I had been here, I probably would be able to answer your questions off the top of my head, but I'm not able to there. But the, the department makes the decision based on the financial constraints, and the physical constraints. Uh, we are the stewards of public land. The city is, and in particular, DPW. Um, we always seek to invite and uh, include community feedback and how those decisions are made, but we have to weigh them against physical limitations like the retaining wall issue that we already talked about. So we have to make the final call, but we always try to make it as in the greatest alignment as possible with the community's uh, preference. So with different money than our six million. Have to pay the property demolition a lot of money. I mean, the money is a lot of there for us. Respectfully, I, I I wouldn't think of it that way necessarily. Like that's that's an accounting issue for us to figure out, right? But yes, I, I think the 2018 slide that I saw for the first time when Abby shared the follow up question was tapping other city demolition funds to pay for demolition and thus. You know other sources of money to build the new building. Um, those funds are uh, transferable. We will have to pay to demolish what is there, and we will have to pay to construct what we build, and we have to find the money one place or another. So it, it's it's possible that we could use city demo funds to pay for the demolition. It's possible we could allocate funds to the capital project to pay for the demolition. The end result will be the same. With all due respect, it might not be though. Right. So if you're saying that the constraints of what is possible, one giant one is accounting, right? And if we only have 2.5 million and we have to pay for the demolition out of that, potentially, I'm not saying for sure, but potentially we have to pay out of that. And we still have to make up with a $4 million addition from the additional design and the additional plan of the project. That the biggest issue here is an accounting. Yeah, that, I, I appreciate that, but that's in fact not exactly what I'm saying. The 2.5 million isn't the maximum uh, uh, budget for the project. It's what we have allocated right now. And yeah. it's the only money that we have guaranteed to work on the project, other than we might have funding at some point in the future. Correct? Yes, that's correct. Well, uh, other than the 220,000 from other sources, but basically, yes, you're correct. Um, we intend to allocate additional funds for this project when we have a, a design that tells us how much it will cost. They also intended to use $6 million for the project. So you can understand our concern, right? I absolutely understand your concern. The, the, the trucks, if those $6 million had been um, bond funds or PAYGO funds, we wouldn't be here because they wouldn't need to move. The only reason that that other three and a half million dollars needed to move was had nothing to do with commitment to the project, but the fact that those uh, funds go away at the end of 2024 and there was no path to spending them that fast. So I, I, I'm actually saying that to agree with you, right? Which is to say, uh, in the inverse of what you just said, yes, the accounting is what made us need the money in order to spend the federal funds on the timeline that they're eligible for. 
it doesn't change our commitment to the project. You shouldn't take me at my word on that. You should make me improve it uh, later in the year. But um, nonetheless, what I'm saying, we had to move those funds in order to spend the time. But when we have clear costs, we can proceed. So can we get your commitment to work and get the Mizzo funds or work on outside grants to fund the project fully? Like it was once, mostly yeah, once, once we know what it will cost to construct under the current cost environment, then yeah. Yeah, we have that on. I know. I, know, I know Evan online, I think, has a question. Evan, would you like to unmute and ask uh, Deputy Mayor a question? Uh, hi, Abby. Thanks. Um, it actually may be more of a question for the room because um, I've missed a couple of chapters. Is, the, is it still an open question what the community would like to have happen there? Or uh, are we still are we still casting about for what whatever this is might be? So that's a great question, Evan. You know, it's because the, the, the city did do a survey um, and they Spring Garden, Spring Hill, East Deutsch Town, uh, Troy Hill, all of the neighborhoods that would really come into contact with that rec center. Um, that survey, I believe, was done in back of 18, 2019. Um, obviously, times have changed, right? COVID has changed a lot of things about the way we work, the way we live, you know, the way we, you know, have fun in our communities, how we get together. Um, so I think, honestly, some of that information is probably a little outdated. I think that. Certainly, you know, the biggest consensus point is, you know, a place that can be a resource for our community. Um, I know we have a lot of concerns about the senior citizens having some place to go. Obviously, we would love to have Troy Hill citizens have a more engaged meeting space or office space, permanent residence, you know, you know, type of thing. Um, obviously, we also have a lot of questions about what the youth do in the community, right? And, you know, the big question in 2018 when we were in this, you know, sort of design and, and programming phase was whether or not there was staff at this, you know, building which, you know, as a whole other thing, which I'm sure we'll get to when we start to dis discuss that building build out. Um, however, that staffing though could make a huge difference in terms of programming if we could offer youth classes after school, you know, I mean, there's there's a whole there's a whole host of other things that could be done. Uh, so basically, Evan, I think the answer is, uh, we have some thoughts, we have some big dreams, um, but I think it needs to be revisited as a neighborhood. But everybody okay. um, so I'll hold my powder on that, but uh, when that, Discussion is going to happen again. I I think I have some some uh, worth considering ideas to add to the discussion. Absolutely, and actually, that's a great question. When do you think in this process that that community engagement piece is going to? Because we need to do it early enough in the budgeting that we that it can bear on the actual design. So when do you see? Where do you see that fitting in? Um, as, as the currently underway feasibility study reaches fruition, we will come back and talk about that. Okay. If if, if that answers your question. The reason I hesitate is the staffing piece is actually an entirely separate operating budget consideration that won't be covered in the study. Okay. So we will come back with the results of the study. We will talk about those. Um, and there might be an opportunity at that time to have some initial conversations about staffing. But the study won't discuss Got staffing, it. which is on the programming side rather than the construction side. Yes, I think I think we all know it's going to be, a, again, an uphill battle to get staffing money for the for Cali Rec. But I think that as a neighbor, we're a neighborhood, we're also pretty committed to that long term um, yeah. to really bring that back to its full use. Sure. I mean, I, uh, uh, it's it's an area that we're exploring as a matter of policy citywide. Uh, and, and so so that's a conversation we welcome when we get to a picture of the building that can tell us what that should look like. Got it. Okay. Now I know it's 627. So the deputy mayor has to, has to leave at 630. Uh, any, I know, I'm sure there are still tons of questions about this. Um, we have a flyer up here uh, and we have, we've started a new page on our website. That's going to host all things Troy Hill citizens related to Cali rec center. I encourage you to grab a flyer. Um, if you have e questions that you would like us to forward uh, to the deputy mayor's office, please email them to us. Um, you know, we're, I, 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 obviously this isn't the end of the question, but if anybody else have one more, and one more question they want to get in before. It will be a recreation center. That, I mean, yes. Yes. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> better. To, to fund a survey of the community about the building uses. If we're looking to spend those funds by the end of 2024, I, I think that would be valuable. We're able to run some in parallel, at least from a high level with the feasibility study. It's not able it, to the extent it would change the basic um, uses, 
that need to be accommodated within the building as described in the prior community engagement, yes, they have to go sequentially. Like when we tell an engineer to do a feasibility study and a sort of basic structural outline of what the building's gonna be, that's based on the results of the prior community engagement on what is most needed there. So those would have to fall in sequence. And if they fell in sequence, it would delay completion of the engineering side of, of the work. That, that, that is not, not, not my choice. That, that's like a factual sort of quick, like we can't have an engineer figure out how to assess the feasibility of the building until we know what's in the building. So to restart that process would delay other aspects of the process. And so we're proceeding along the line that the prior engagement speaks to community desire and that we need to have en the, you know, engineering conversations about how to build the thing that meets those needs. Right, no, I, I understand that. I think when you're building a building, you have a sense of what things have been done the year before, what size they oh, on a, on a, on a On an internal programming basis, no, th th then in that, in that situation, it just becomes constrained by the, the space, right? Like if we've got a building that has these many rooms of these sizes, and if we treat that as given, how do we best program them throughout the day or the week or the month of the year? We've got a lot of time to have that conversation. All right. Uh, I want to be sensitive to your time this Thank evening. Thank you for uh, stopping by. Much appreciated. We will be in touch this coming week. Um, and we'll keep the ball rolling. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, we actually have another special guest on Zoom. Uh, her name is Sharon, and she's from the Northside Food Pantry. Uh, and she's going to tell us a little bit about their current operations and some of the benefits that are available to our neighbors. So, Sharon, if you want to unmute, uh, you have a room full of people here in person, and you have a, a bunch of people on Zoom. So, take it away. Hello, everyone. My name is Sharon Calden. I'm a um, on the board of the Northside Food Pantry Advisors, and I want to thank you very much for allowing me to be with you uh, tonight just to share information about the food pantry, which residents of uh, Troy Hill certainly can partake in. So I want to be sure you have the information you need. Uh, as inflation has driven up the cost of food, as we've all experienced, it's really uh, put a lot of pressure on families, uh, senior citizens, et cetera, to uh, obtain uh, nutritional food. So, so we are there to serve you. So I'm going to give you some more information. Um, the Northside Food Pantry Advisors, we uh, support the Northside Food Pantry with volunteers. We um, seek donations and we provide other services. Um, for the past three years during the pandemic, we were actually doing remote ordering because uh, the, rather than close the food pantry, we wanted people to have access as of April 4th, however, uh, we are, have resumed in-person shopping. So uh, the date, the place, uh, location of the food pantry is 1601 Brighton Place. Uh, it's in the Northside uh, Common Ministries building. The food pantry door is on the side. It's a blue door, very recognizable. The pantry is open three days a week, always open during that time. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9.30 till noon, we are open. Um, the pantry is divided into two sections, one for daily shopping and one that includes monthly shopping. So um, residents, in order to get a monthly order, which is a much larger order, must live in the north side, must be able to prove uh, through um, uh, proof of address uh, that they live in 15212, one, four, or three, three. Um, so the uh, daily orders, um, it, anyone actually can get at any time. There is a large variety of fresh produce. So I would say at any one time, we probably have about 20 items uh, of fresh produce. This includes uh, potatoes, onions, greens, um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, lots of different fruits, uh, Mangoes, avocado, I mean, it's truly pretty amazing what we have. Also on a daily basis, we have bread from Breadworks. Uh, we also have some limited dry goods. Uh, so canned goods, canned vegetables, et cetera. Uh, the monthly order, which is a larger order, can, uh, um, includes meats, um, chicken and uh, um, fish. We also even have uh, non-food items. 
or I'm sorry, non-meat items. Uh, we have uh, items for cleaning. We have uh, uh, paper products. We have, sometimes we have pet food. Uh, we have diapers. So we have a large selection of uh, things that are available for you. Um, see, the unique part about this food pantry is one, uh, the amount of produce that is offered. So the Northside Food Pantry Advisors actually fundraise to be able to provide fresh fruits and vegetables. So it is a large uh, selection. The other thing is our um, clients have the choice. They pick what they want. Other food pantries, you know, they're offering you food in a box, et cetera, food in a bag. We um, have our, our uh, clients pick what they want, what they need, rather than uh, just boxing it all up. Um, in addition to the uh, food pantry in the north side, we are currently uh, doing a fresh produce uh, distribution in Northview Heights every Saturday morning at the um, uh, Northview Heights Senior Citizens Center. Um, so uh, if you know anyone living in that area, this is another place uh, to be able to get fresh uh, fruits and produce. Um, we do statistics, it's pretty amazing how much we're able to dis uh, distribute. In 2022, we distributed over 75,000 pounds of produce. We served about uh, 300 families for a week uh, with about 120 children. So it's a pretty large outreach. Um, in the future, uh, we hope to um, increase awareness. So we're working on this, uh, talking with other neighborhood groups. Uh, we're also hoping to um, possibly find uh, a means of transportation to get uh, the food to people who don't have transportation, who you know, currently have to come by uh, bus, uh, get a neighbor to come, a jitney, et cetera. So we're hoping to do that in the future. Um, and basically what we want to share is that we are not just providing food security. You could go to the Dollar General and you could get food. Uh, the food pantry really uh, provides nutritional security to the families in the area. And that's kind of the uh, gist of the whole thing. I'm uh, certainly happy to take questions. Um, well, Sharon, thank you so much for sharing. I think we all know that our communities have really seen a big increase in food insecurity, especially related to COVID. Um, does anybody have any questions, do Janet? Do people have to register in advance? Do they have to register in advance, Sharon? Uh, no, you don't. You don't. Uh, if you are coming for a daily order, uh, you don't have to register at all. If you are coming um, for a monthly order, when you are there, be prepared to show uh, proof of address. That, that would be the biggest. That actually right. puts me into my question. Thank you for everything you do. I think it's absolutely wonderful and we, I, the community appreciates it. My question would be if, if someone is unhoused, how are they able to receive food from your pantry? Mm -hmm. were, you, were you able to hear that question? I can repeat no, it. No, I, I really wasn't. The question, the question is, um, if someone is unhoused and they don't have a, they don't have proof of address, are they able to take to take advantage of the benefits of the pan food pantry? Uh, for the daily orders, uh, for the daily orders, you you would. I um, these are your question is it's a Troy Hill uh, resident proof of address really can just be a bill from the gas company or a bill from the electric company. Oh, no, I think she's responding to a different. So, it, Sharon, you're saying you do not need, for the, for the daily order, someone might, could be someone like an unhoused, a homeless, you know, someone who just doesn't have housing. They can still take advantage of the, of the pantry. They the actually could still, yes, go to the food pantry and, and be able to obtain food. Okay, okay. great. And they don't have to show proof of address or, or have a bill or? Not, not for the daily orders. Okay. Keep monthly orders, which are pretty extensive and offer much more, including butter, eggs, I mean, there's a lot more. That we do ask for proof of address. Got it. We fundraise to care for the residents of the North Side. Got it, and Sharon, the question in the chat is, do you have a sense of how many, like, do you have a sense of how many Troy Hill people take advantage of that, or do you? I don't, but you know, that's a wonderful question. And I, we have a pretty good database. I should be able to answer that for you. Yeah, if you, if you uh, also have some handouts that I can uh, send to you electronically. 
that would be great. We're, we're happy to share that in our newsletter. Um, any other questions for Sharon before she- Or any suggestions you have we'd be interested in, but that's a very good question. I will get back to you about that. David, yeah, uh, Sharon, thank you so much for, for being with us today. I had a couple questions pertaining to your needs in terms of food donations as well as volunteer needs. Um, just from what you said, it looks like you might be putting together a volunteer program to actually like uh, deliver food directly to folks. And, um, and in terms of like dry goods and, and such, is there any place that community members can take a look at your needs, whether a website, Facebook page, that sort of thing? Did you, did you catch up? Did you catch up? No, that? I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. So the question is basically, how can the community get involved? Do you have a, a, a call to action? Can, are you looking for people to help with delivery? Yes. Services? Yes. Thank you so much for asking. So uh, we do have a website, um, the Northside uh, Food Pantry Advisors website. There is a, a place there where you can volunteer. Um, so we, we need volunteers. We need, uh, it used to be we re needed remote um, people to uh, take remote calls. Now we need people in the food pantry. Um, <clears throat> so you can fill out a form and, uh, you know, offer to volunteer and then somebody will get back to you. Uh, but we definitely need volunteers. We also need volunteers uh, for the uh, produce distribution in Northview Heights every week. That's a great way to volunteer. You're basically volunteering for an hour and a half. Uh, and on a Saturday morning, it's really a a great experience. So I appreciate you asking about that. And on your website, I believe there's an option to donate food as well. So there are some guidelines that people- There are. We do want you to call ahead of time about that uh, because the food pantry director, she likes to know what's being uh, given and how much is there, that kind of thing. All right, fabulous. Any other questions, comments? Excellent questions. Thank you so much. All right, Sharon, thank you so much. You're free to hop off. And, uh, okay, great. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you all. Information out. Thank you. Uh, okay, Councilman Wilson, how are you? Do <laughs> <laughs> you have any updates for us? I don't have updates. I want to make sure that I was here for the conversation because I know that next week we're meeting. Indeed, we are. I feel uh, I feel good about progress. You know, the the, the, the work scope of work being started, which is encouraging. To me. Yeah, what's encouraging to me is, is how much you all are engaged to make sure the project stays on course. Because on my side, I don't see funding as an issue. I see just the commitment to do the project and the quality of the quality. I mean, it sounds like we need to be zero in the lead. Being direct. Yeah. Because it helps when we're working together. We're both asking the same question. It goes a long way. So, typically, the way I see it is to get it done. Particularly the way I see Fabulous. Uh, thank you for thank you for being here. Thank you for chiming in when you know and having having our back. Anybody have any questions for Councilman Wilson or his team before Morgan? Yeah, I was just thinking about this. So totally different thing. Um different project, not nearly as large. That those steps from Troyville Road down to 28. Yep. Those are still, those are so close. I know budget season is coming up. If we want to see those get on some sort of list for repair. Is that something when the budget, like uh, when the budget survey comes out, is that something that we'll have an opportunity as a neighborhood to sort of submit feedback on? Or like, how would we, I know it wasn't on the list this year, but how would we get those steps on the list for repair next year? Well, good question. I'll let you know that there was an allocation from federal funds Oh. to the city of Pittsburgh for a city plan, right? Oh. And when they asked me on the north side, I that to be done. You did, okay. Cool. I think they were suggesting a request for funding. Okay, cool. So, but that doesn't guarantee that somebody can do it <laughs> uh, because it's all scored on, you know, I mean, there's, there's like I know, I can my request based on what I get from the community, but then there's also like, they run actual data points like, 
okay, so there's a, you know, so there's a school there. Like, what, what's all going to make sure? What's all going to like make sure that's like a priority against all the other stuff you see? And so that's that's the the answer we should get from them. And um, but it didn't it didn't happen this year. I think we did a good a list of steps there. But did you think wrong? Well, I feel like we had this conversation. It was out. It might have been a time when maybe Faith was here and you were not here, and I mean, it was just. I, I don't have a list of that. I'll, okay. I'll get that list. Okay. And then, yeah. It's not a list, and we just need to understand why we're doing that. So it's priorities that we're not including doing the group, and you know, we have tell them the five to one thing. Yeah, and, and I didn't realize that. I mean, just to be fair, they did, you know, we, we also assessed, even though the rail was long, there was the investment in there, and also there was an investment in sidewalks um, coming up for the split. And that's actually technically a split to the overhang. So there was a pretty large investment to connect. You know, on both sides. Mm -hmm. So that uh, those other pair of steps um, is, you know, would be the next step in making sure there's more mobility, you know, options for people. Um, and and uh, my train of thought here. But basically, I mean, they are committed to, to doing that, but they also are committed to being very transparent. And they have a map. I'm not sure it's public yet. They have a map of all the city steps. And they show the rating of the steps and why you know, you know the TDS and why created certain um you know ratings. So I'll I'll see if we can just we'll see the public that we can send them. Uh, you know, because then we can all be you know, we can all have the, the transparent conversation. Yeah, actually yeah, actually I'm on the side of um Unfortunately, uh, we the city gets uh, sued a fair amount for steps that aren't actually secured, like to say that don't walk on these steps anymore. So, as we're like trying to repair steps, I see stuff come over the council where we're paying out, you know, people that are getting injured, they're using them, so they're not blocked off appropriately. It's just like one, you know, like one piece of wood, set, you know, just cross it and people just jump over it. Um, so we're actually like spending money on that side to, you know, just like pay for all this. So we're like trying to catch up, but then we're also paying for all these other costs. So um, I'm having to, I'm having uh, PDW go out and actually put more physical barriers up or whatever. The steps are no longer like walkable. Because that's the kind of situation we're in. And that's, I guess, the same thing we're doing with the bridges. Yeah. yeah. But. Anyway, we do that federal funding and let's make sure we get that for us. Okay, fabulous. Um, segue, by the way, on priorities. What's up? No, you can, I, I was just No, no, please, no, please. So I'm super it. new to the community and I just had a question. So I've seen other neighborhoods, I'm not sure if this is your domain, but so please can um, tell me this for sure. You can discuss more. So I've seen other communities having remediation of invasive weeds and like the knot weed that comes out over the hill and all of our parks. It's like, everything and so um, is there any way we have a list for those or for whatever those remediation efforts are um, we're using our outdoor spaces a lot and so I really would like to get that resource that I see here to use that as well okay yeah on my time in council the past few years I haven't seen the city contract with the, the goats on the north side mm -hmm. so I'm not aware if they do that in other parts of the city mm -hmm. so I can look into that or actually there's different organizations that yeah um, you know uh, that would fund that Thing. I mean, I, I've, I've seen, I've seen it. Park and they do yeah. it in Bull Shelf. Yeah, I've seen it done in Bull Shelf from where I used to like travel with that way. Yeah. Um, is there a hillside that you're thinking of? Um, Rialto for sure, because it just it comes by, by, I would say, by beginning of June, where it's like being eaten. Mm -hmm. And then um, also the park area near where the community center is. And I'm sure there's others, but those are the two that are on my mind. All right, I'll write that down to see who does that. Okay, thank you. I would say the same for trees too, if you're. If Having a, an explosion of lantern flies, that's a, like a really systemic, terrible problem across the US. It started near Philly. 
um, and it's the tree of heaven that's highly mm -hmm. invasive right. and spreading everywhere. So um, I know I've called 311 quite a few times. They came and removed a few of the trees around the area. Oh, really? Um, yeah, but if you're able to. Where's this tree? I don't know. Is it big? It looks like it's a sumac. Yeah, it looks like a sumac, just like a little bit like. Yeah, it has uh, like sharp, like, sharp, like leaves instead of leaves. They're all, so they're all down Trail Road. So you're probably looking yeah. at one. Uh, only yeah. after about five months of me calling weekly. <laughs> yeah, typically, I know we, we received calls last. Uh, last year about the you know, situation. Yeah. Uh, Tier one was the front of all those calls to the county. Yeah, well, it's, it's just because the lantern fly is decimating the, the grape population yeah. across the country, and the only way that we can kill the lantern fly is to get rid of its natural habitat, which yeah. is the tree cutting. So. so it's not the main thing. No, it's <laughs> not. That's what the arborist said he calls it the tree of hell. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> also, I have to I have to be corrected. Lin Lindsay Dill, who knows a lot of plants, she says actually along Troy Hill Road a lot of it is actual sumac. So my bad. There Tina. is beautiful sumac. Yeah. Along uh, question in the back. We also seem to have a rodent issue in all of this. Oh no. Serious. Um, two neighbors that actually got rats in their home. Ew. Um, oh no. I personally had mice. I had ants in my. Wow. Program that happens and how do we go about every year? Is that correct? I'm not aware of any from the city does, but the county health department might be doing that. Okay. I have called them before. Yeah. And um, they they say that they won't bring all the big plants. And however, you have to be home to accept them. But they never called you to bring them out. My neighbors have called. Air health control. Um, Elegant Air Control. Uh, the health department. Okay. That's where you call. Um, if, well, uh, why don't we even? I'll come around and I'll get your information. So why okay. staff is even involved? Okay. Great. I was just going to say, uh, uh, if, if, if is, is there you didn't any idea. way to like um, site turn on or or uh, rent or maybe don't put their trash out so that it pile up? The health department said they cannot go into anyone's yard to check if their trash is put out or if they have excess. You have to actually take a picture and maybe send it to them. Um, one of my neighbors, they actually yeah. sent a letter to, but the letter was so vague, it gave him an opportunity to say, yes, I have, um, I do put my trash out, and yes, I have had um, exterminators come in and take care of the problem. They gave him that option to just pretty much ignore, mm -hmm. ignore the letter, and mm -hmm. I know for a fact he hasn't done it either. I think we might have to follow up on that. My first instinct is always 311, especially as there's a trail of evidence, um, you know, and again, documenting these issues. But I think maybe, I mean, if this is an ongoing problem, maybe we can talk to Councilman Wilson's office about what to do to take it to the next level. Cat. Yes, question in the back. I mean, the street. Yeah, it's the neighbor. Oh, by her, Christina. And they, the, the house that fell over, she flew with them. Now they're everywhere up that way. Right? Oh boy. It's going to get worse. Yeah, it's going to come to everybody's house eventually if we don't we'll get it contained. Right. Right. Um, Penny, we're going to follow up. I, I think you're right. I think the, the, I think the county does do baiting, and I'll follow up on the schedule for that. There's a question in the back. I want to make sure. Yeah, can... I just wanted to piggyback on that. We have on Sunman and Forest, we have uh, an empty lot that is owned. Yep. Um, and it's been reported uh, many times about weed. I think I know. Forest, but um, there's several neighbors in that area that use it as their dog's um, toilet. Ah, we I had, have the, um, we yeah. had mentioned, I think a few of us did 311 about how we feel that in the summer it's going to be bad where we may have less. Right. Absolutely. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Uh, David, I think you mentioned that lot to me, and I actually just emailed that individual the other day, and he he got back to me via email, the owner for that lot. So Troy Hill Citizens will be scheduling a call with him to talk about how we can keep that lot proactively beautiful throughout the summer. Um, so there was a rumor he was going to build a house, which I think would be kind of like, you don't just like build a house. Yeah, I, I, we do not know what his current intentions are for that lot, but it's funny that you brought that up because he's I literally just emailed him the other day. So. Okay, because they 
they're starting to revisit the uh, huge curly willow is there. Yeah. And I don't know what happened, but they, they chopped it. It looks terrible. <laughs> and uh, there was a rope hanging, and I called, and they said, well, unfortunately, it's owned, and we can't do anything about yeah. rope hanging. Yeah. And I said, unfortunately, some child may get hurt. Yeah. And then yeah. maybe then the action will be taken. Be taken, um, right. So I was very upset about that, the whole the whole dog bathroom issue, the whole thing, yeah. the whole Absolutely. You know, people's cars are parked there. So, um, you know, I, I just got so tired of complaining because they said, unless you see this person in action, actually letting their dog go to the bathroom, they can't do anything. The dog, the dog, the dog poop up here is a whole problem. Anyway, yeah. so I mean, I, it's a regular thing. It's before, like, yeah. I'm not going to. You know, Yeah, so you know, a, couple, a couple things. Um, I will happily provide an, an, an update at the next meeting on this individual and we'll see what we can, we'll see what agreement we can come to in terms of keeping that lot clean. Um, just to be sensitive to Councilman Wilson's time, are there any questions specific for him or his office? Otherwise, we're happy to talk about. We've got lots of other Troy Hill. I, I have one more thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stop sign at the top of my house, I'm sure everybody here knows, no one paid attention to it. I was there today, and three people came and just didn't even do a California or whatever stop, you know, the, uh, going, up or going, uh, up? going up, going up, and, okay, and they, people were in, in yeah, okay. people were intimidated right. by that. So they will sit at the other points and just let them go. And yeah. So here's the thing about this: I, I'll talk to traffic. And they um, they can and they can send out the motorcycles. Send the motorcycles. So that's that's an option. But let me just say that most likely your neighbor will be the one to I'm not yeah. saying I'm okay with people bringing a law. I'm just saying like right. this room might get a ticket. So yeah. you heard well, me say that's are, are you are, 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 people who show up to community committee meetings aren't the ones who are <laughs> oh no no, no 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 I have a situation where they asked about a four way stop in another community and then there was one person got a ticket and then the person who yeah, yeah and it turned out to be in like the spouse of the uh, person. Uh, <laughs> I was like, there's another one stop one person. That's what we call you the know, find out portion. There's only one person that got stopped there for three days of monitoring it and you know, they did get someone. They were like, yeah, it was, it was my husband. Oh, <laughs> ah, like, well. Uh, you know? But I just want to say, are people okay with me? Send the motorcycle. Like, I, 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 I think it's time, and I know that our zone uh, one folks yeah, are on the call. But, yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's time to have a traffic cop hang out up there for a little bit and just, mm -hmm. and just keep say, some it's business. It's really hard to see left and right when you're going up there. So, so yeah, you do have to go up a little bit past yes, the stop sign so that someone's so not that someone can coming see. right in. I there. absolutely do agree. And if, if I'm in no rush and people are coming up the hill, I'm usually waving them on. We yeah. usually yeah. wave them on yeah. too because yeah. it's easier yeah. to turn on. But if you're coming up, yes. you can't really stop at that stop sign without, you you know, without somebody you know, jacking yeah. on you. Yeah, you know? for sure. I totally agree. So yeah. it, there's a there's some gray area. We totally yeah. get that. Yeah. Um, I did have a question. I've noticed um, there's been a lot of, of, of speeding, specifically like drag racing up and down the ridge line. Oh, yes. yeah. And there's a lot of kids who walk up and down that to get to the community. I'm really right. fearful. Yeah. If we could get like another stop sign at the corner of Cali and Wickline, if we could get speed bumps, something. Because um, that one is really commonly used. It's one yeah. of the most used. Cali and Wickline. I have long wanted a speed bump on Cal on Cali. I just and then I would sit there and I would make a I would be viral on TikTok immediately. You know those photos you put in a speed bump and people don't know and they fly over and like their bumper <laughs> falls off. We would be we, I Troy Hill says we'd be viral in ten seconds. It would I be amazing. I go on Cali on Wickline. Yeah, that's what I think she's on the Wickline. But no, no, I know both. No, too. both of them. I mean, I think both of them because people people see them as cut throughs. You yeah. know, okay. like they're flying up and down. You know, I think I think it's, I think it's both. But and there's like so many okay. kids on that road that it's just so not. Let me just get down the street that you think we discussed. Wickline, yeah. ideally. Uh, so where, where at, where the, the Cal at the intersection of Cali and Wickline. Okay. T. So, you like real here on, on Spring Hill. So, 
Callie, you know, looks at you. Oh, it's the, know, one below. the one below. The one below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. But mine goes yeah. way yeah. on the other side of Troy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. No, right, Callie. Right. So Callie, at the end of the year, like left or right? Yeah. Or right on Wicklow. Correct. So, so there's, not, you, there's not a stop sign at the end of Cali to get on. There's there. a stop sign at the end of Cali, but there's no stop sign coming up Wick Lines to like turn right onto Cali or to continue to go up to then turn right on Rialto. Okay, so you, it'll be a stop sign on Wick Lines. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll have them look at it. And then what else? You said, I'm word. Um, so on Wick Lines, there's been a lot of drag racing at like five or six in the morning. There's been cars coming up where I hear like 60, 70 miles an hour zipping up and down, or really late at night, two or three in the morning. And it actually loops around on the Rialto. Yep. Because it's like it goes with line and then they take a hard turn and yep. go on the Rialto there. And then loop back around on Cali and then go back down with line. It gets crazy. And it's all the crazy. down there as well. Like with line by the old bus, by the bus yeah. and another family out front of It is very That's late, so That was all right. I'm so soft, though. I have candles. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Like, I'll tell you the poor thing. Bike cops. He's not a bike cops. I mean, it'd be pretty funny with the National Bike Cops. He cops. Yeah. Like cops yeah. 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 Scooter cops? Scooter cops? <laughs> I watched it. That's a topic for that. <laughs> I heard we, we heard there was some scooter some scooter business. Okay. Anything else for Council and Wilson? We have lots of other uh Troy. Yes. Just one quick uh getting back to pets. I moved up to Troy Hill uh late summer last year and the mosquitoes were insane. Um I remember hearing that some other parts of the city is gonna have some mosquito treatment. Um but oh, interesting. Troy Hill I would love that. Um, so as we're starting to head, like, you know, we're heading back into summer, wondering if that might be possible. Like, I remember hearing- Yeah, so the county health board does that. Okay. And they, um, it's actually a funny looking truck that says, like, we are straining for what's now a while. Yeah, okay. I remember that that yeah. was some areas in the state where people had gotten Yeah. Oh. I can add that to my list because I'm going to contact them about the baby. Also, the most effective thing to get mosquitoes are bats. Bat boxes, if you install them, they are great. Aww, I love bats. I just think it's too bad. Feather than like spring. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Lots, we still have lots of items to get through, and it is seven o'clock. So if you bear with me, I think we're gonna we're gonna try to move through this pretty quick. Everybody, let's get we'll get a little focus here. Okay. No, it's okay. Councilman Wilson's uh, yakking up a storm too. Okay, quick firehouse update. Uh, I know some people uh, on the call asked about this um, virtually. So the firehouse is currently in development of Wildman and Chalmers. Um, they are still working through the URA process. I believe they have a vendor contracted, a different vendor. It's not the it's not the produce company. We talked about this last time the, 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 at our last meeting. Um, a brewery actually came along with Wildman Chalmers and Scratch, and they presented their plan. Um, this is still in the works. No updates as of right now. Again, still with the URA. As soon as we have any updates, we will happily let you know. Um, next thing, community gardens full, which is great. All our community garden plots are taken. I hope everybody has a great gardening season. Um, may the pests be stay ever away from your plants. Okay. Actually, I have a question yes. about that. Yes. Do you organize a seed swap convention? Uh, yes. And actually, I know Lenora's on the call. We usually do one around May. Yeah. A seed, seed and plants. There are plenty of people that bring dig up plants from the yard and bring that, which we love. So keep an eye out for that. Um, let's see. D D D D D. Oh, back to the um, community engagement piece. So for those of you who might are on the city's email list, who I know have no idea who got this survey, um, the Office of Management and Budget did put out a public notice. They, are, they have an open, they open feedback for a survey right now. And one of the things in that survey, uh, they ask about budgeting for, you'll get, you guessed it, recreation centers. So I would encourage everybody to go on and do the survey. I have a link up here. If you want to come up at the end of the meeting, I can text it to you or email it to you. Um, I'm going to drop it in the chat here. What was that? I'll, e I'll email it out. But if anybody, if anybody wants to, if anybody wants to stop by up here and, and see the link, um, I highly recommend you do the survey. It talks about stuff other than Cali Rec Center, of course. Lots of things related to the city. Um, you know, to go back to our conversations about pushing on the city, I think the more documentation we can submit, the more requests, the more information, the more engaged we can be with it, these processes, hopefully the more action we get out of that. 
Um, I believe the survey is open till April 30th. So we've got the rest of the month. Um, membership cards are done, but I didn't pick them up at the printer. So sorry. So you'll have to wait to get your membership, your official membership cards till next meeting. Um, if I get to, if I get to them and I can mail them out to you, if you bought memberships online, I'll do that ahead of time. But if you want to get yours at the next meeting, that's fine too. Um, let's see. Oh, West Banco, uh, they shared some information here uh, about some programs. There's a first time home buyers program. There's some cards up here for the new manager and the Troy Hill office. Um, if you do any banking with West Banco or you're looking for any support in that matter, I highly suggest you grab a business card before you go. Um, let's see, what else? Da, 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 da. Okay, David, <laughs> you ready to go? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. I'm David. Um, I live over here in Rialto Place. I've been here for almost two years now. Um, I'm the mastermind behind the community trash pickups. So um, here to let everybody know that we are starting again in earnest now that the weather is a little bit warmer. The next one is going to be the last Sunday of this month, April the 30th. We meet down at Troy Hill Citizens Park at 10 o'clock. It's usually 10 to 12. I'm there for about an hour with trash supplies. Um, and we've got uh, everything you need. I got gloves, I got bags, I got vests. I, we got like four or five of the trash picker uppers um, if you're not so keen on grabbing cigarette butts with your gloved hands or otherwise. Um, and this will be going on, usually what we're going to be doing with this is the last Sunday of every month with a rain date of the next weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. Um, the rain date for this particular one is going to be Sunday the 7th of May. Yes, Sunday May 7th for the rain to this one. Uh, Just in case. If, if you say so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, it's yes. uh, and then we usually <laughs> we usually just pick a street, uh, go for it, and then we kind of spread out around the neighborhood, make sure we're not covering our bases, uh, doubling back. And, and thank you to all of those who have showed up so far with with your uh, your um, trash collecting skills. And, uh, and we're going to get a lot of stuff out of the hillsides this year. Um, I did have a question as well, Abby, on this. Yes. I know that um, an especially bad area is the right across from the rec center. Yes. Um, did you say something about there being an actual, like, somebody that comes for the hillside? Yes, I have, I have a dumping contact on my, on my to-do list. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, the Facebook invite for this month's trash pickup will be both on the Hooligans page and on the Troy Hill Citizens page as of uh, right before I came. So um, feel free to sign up and uh, see you all there. Uh, David, one comment from Lenora online. She asked if the time of event can be later after church services. So maybe we want to shift, maybe not this one, but maybe the next one we can consider shifting a little later in case folks folks from the that attend church want to, want to do that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, um, and Lenora, if you can hear me, um, if we, I don't know if you're willing to help connect with uh, the folks in the neighborhood. I'm not sure if you go to Holy Name up here. Um, Grace Lutheran. Uh, Grace Lutheran, no, I'm so sorry. Um, anybody, well, I guess open, I could open question for the room. If anybody wants to help us connect with um, any of the churches up here, any of the surrounding communities, um, because we have had uh, Julie Ewing from Provident Charter come and bring some families up uh, a couple times ago. That was fantastic. Um, so any kind of connections you want to make to let people know, that'd be awesome too. Jane, go I, ahead. I can connect to those holy name about that. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Sure. Great. Love that. Okay. Yeah. And I think you have, do you have one more thing you want to talk about? Um, I'm actually going to defer that to my lovely wife. Oh, look at hey. this. Um, so we're going to have a community yard sale. Woo, you guys excited? Introduce yourself. Oh, okay. I'm Stephanie. <laughs> I also live at 120 Rialto Place. Um, I work with Mr. Public Schools, so I'm a busy, busy, busy bee. But um, I have summer's off, so I'm really excited to spend more time in the community and just like hanging out. Um, so we're going to do a community art sale. Uh, we have about 25 neighbors signed up, which is pretty exciting. Um, and I'd love to get just a couple more. Do you need to set a deadline? Because we wanted to create like a Troy Hill map and have all the addresses of where everybody signed up that was like on the event page as well um, as on the hooligans page and kind of we put on the citizens page too and people could pull up on their phones and then be able to see where all the different yard sales are around the community. Um, it got a little exciting because we were like, well, 
Yeah, it's a really great turn of Christmas card. Maybe you want to invite some vendors to come as well and some food trucks. So Dave has been working on that part, and we're asking for a $25 donation to Trail Citizens to be a vendor, uh, which is super low if anybody's ever vended anywhere. But it's our first time doing it, so we're keeping it super low. Um, and we have we plotted it out. How many spots? Like 20, 20 I think spots? There's, yeah, there's uh, going to be room for in between 20 and 25 spots in the park. In the park, yeah. uh, the way that we mapped it out. And then we have room for five food trucks. So Dave is in communication with a couple different food trucks as well. So hopefully it'll be a really great community day. Um, it is the day after Millville Music Festival. So Millville Music Festival is uh, that Friday, Saturday, and then New York Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we can take up everybody that wants to like, wander around mm -hmm. afterwards um, and get some wares. Um, the only other thing we want to work on, and I know that David can't do with you, is um, a children's area. So having um, possibly like, some children's activities, whether that's even just sidewalk talk, uh, but just some things that like, um, kids can do maybe like one of those spin art things or like a, um, just some different ideas, maybe some music, things like that, um, just to kind of keep the kids in one area, especially with probably near the vendors. So if the vendors will be in one area and the kids area, will be near there. Okay. Yeah. Where, where do you intend to have the vendors? Uh, in the Troy Hill Citizens Park. We're going to the park. Yeah, we're going to set up tables like we do in Pigtobacca. No, but Plain Street has to be open for people to go to 9 o'clock mass. On Sunday. It's, when does it start? When does Nine o'clock is the mess. Is the mess? No, I mean, when is... Um, and the other one's at 11.30. 11. I, I don't think we've decided on the starting time. Yeah, I think I put it on the invite, but we can switch it around. But I did speak with... Um, forget who it was. I think it was Holy Name. It was Beckett. Scott. Yes. And she said she could put it in the bulletin, so she was pretty excited about like having it be a part of everything. But um, we can figure... No, but I mean, most people go down Claim Street to get into the parking lot. We, okay. we, we can make sure we work around that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's important. And that, that we thought it would be nice if people were coming out of Mass and then they could like walk around to the, it's hopefully it'd be a beautiful spring day and they could walk around to the different yard sales. Um, the other thing is we weren't sure if the um, the convent would be open. I know they usually do theirs on Saturday. For the rummage sale, that's open once a month. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it could be open on a Sunday. It would be a bit much. Yeah. Okay. Um, it just might be, you know, just a, just a thought, just to, or just at least maybe even flyers outside so the people know to come back for it. Well, yeah, they have flyers at the table when every people, all the yeah. people pay for their stuff. Yeah, so that, I thought that would be nice too, just like make sure we have that connection. We can um, we can get some. I can work with Janet to get some information for that. Okay, that'd be great. But yeah, that's the idea. Um, and then we see how it goes and see what we want to add or what we want to take away for the following year. But I'd love to have it be something that we do yearly in the spring. What day was it again? It's going to be um, May twenty first, so it's a Sunday. And we did pick Sunday because of the Millville Music Festival. We didn't want to overlap with such a big event. Yeah, so we thought sure. about the twentieth, but yeah. Um. Uh, Stephanie, question on um, the chat. Just wanted to see if you are still the contact for vendors. Uh, I believe your email address is on the Facebook event page. Yeah, and I've gotten right? no emails so, like from vendors. I know Dave's been working as well. Yeah, yeah I can okay. contact or Dave, either one. Great. Uh, yeah, Lisa, you can you can reach out to Stephanie. Her email is in the um, is in that Facebook event, or I can put you in touch. Whatever works best. Uh, okay, we're really excited about that yard sale. Uh, I think it's gonna be great. Hopefully, get your get your spring cleaning on. Clean out all your <laughs> clean out clean out all your basements and your attics. Um, I know we're, we're, we're still kicking here, we're running a little overtime. I want to make sure we turn it over to our folks at Zone 1. Um, I see we have uh, the commander, actually no, we have Sergeant, Sergeant Burford and uh, Officer uh, DeFeo, they're on the line. So if you want to speak, let us know what's going on. Yeah, thanks, Abby. Yeah, Mike Burford here, everyone uh, from Zone 1. Thanks for having us tonight. Um, commander Malloy apologizes, he was on the call. Uh, he had to jump off for a prior engagement. Uh, so. I have some uh, updates on some things, but before I do that, uh, Officer Defio, would you want to give the statistics? Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's Officer Defio. Thanks for having us again. Um, for the last 30 days in Troy Hill, there were 16 reports generated and there were zero arrests. Um, for the part one crimes, which are uh, homicide, aggravated assault, arson, burglary, robbery, um, thefts, so on. Um, there was actually zero. There was actually two thefts, but they were theft from vehicle, uh, which technically don't fall into the part one crimes. Um, but uh, those two um, uh, theft from vehicles 
were the only two thefts that you guys had. Other than that, there were no arrests and uh, no other part one crimes. Sergeant uh, Burford, if you want to go over anything else. All right. Thanks, Eric. So, guys, just some things I want to talk about since the last meeting. Um, you know, the last meeting, it was brought up some problems with the uh, Airbnb located at 1711 Rialto Street. Yes. I did reach out and after some heavy digging, was able to make contact with the owner of that property. Uh, I expressed uh, the concerns regarding the parking. The owner uh, was very receptive to, uh, to your concerns and said he will address that directly in a more uh, direct manner with people that rent uh, or utilize his, uh, his property there and that he'll also get that expressed over to Airbnb. Now, since then, I've, I've had a few other problems, uh, one regarding uh, trash uh, being put out and, and another was uh, something uh, right now, I, I spoke with a direct individual, a neighbor uh, today about. So just, you know, that the guy who owns the Airbnb there, uh, he, he wanted me to express to you guys that he is trying to be a good neighbor. I think his uh, overall goal is to have a full tenant in that location. But uh, being the situation he was in, he was looking to uh, kind of supplement it with Airbnb income whenever there wasn't a full tenant in there. Uh, so, you know, if there are concerns with that in the future, please let me know. Um, something else, we've got a lot of calls regarding drug dealing around the laundromat. Uh, I was up there today making contact with some people in the laundromat. It's an ongoing investigation, but we are aware of it. And then I don't know if this was in the last month, but, uh, you know, if any of you are aware, we had a vehicle drive over, uh, is it Huff Way or Huff Street, uh, down towards 28. Uh, it was pretty extreme. So I found out today that uh, although the investigation is ongoing, I don't know if it's going to result in any kind of criminal activity. Uh, I know the, to the gentleman's toxicology came back today, possibly negative. So I don't know if it was a medical event or what. Uh, that gentleman is, he, he walked out of that crash. And if anyone knows the distance he traveled, uh, that was something out of a movie stunt. It, it, he's lucky to be alive. So uh, other than that, the one thing I wanted to talk about, I put a link in the chat. Uh, Commander Malloy would definitely like to express this is at Zone 1, he is uh, initiating a Zone 1 CARES program, which is multiple officers from each shift will be uh, assigned to each neighborhood. And also that will include a supervisor from each shift. And those officers will be up in the neighborhoods, walking the beats, uh, walking the beats, engaging, engaging with the community. Uh, engaging with the businesses, the business owners. So if you see officers up there now that the weather's getting uh, warmer, that's, you know, it's kind of beginning marking that we're going to have door hangers. So if you get something put on your door, uh, Commander Malloy created a website that's going to hopefully share a lot of information as well. So, you know, if you see somebody up there walking around, please, you know, introduce yourself, talk to them and, uh, you know, engage. So that's all I really have. Any questions or concerns? Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for coming to that Airbnb. I know that it was uh, a real, a real trial for a bit there. And I, and I, I trust that that individual is going to, um, you know, consider the neighbors as they move forward with that, whatever their plans are for that building. Um, folks in the room, any, any questions for the, our zone one team? Anybody online, any raised hands? I don't see any. All right, guys. Well, listen, if anyone does have a question, you guys are right. Troy Hill Group's really good at reaching out to us here at the zone. I know a lot of people like don't like to bring things up on a public forum. So please email, call me, uh, myself, or Officer Defio or the commander, okay? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, Officer Defio, my information is in the chat. My cell phone number and my email address if anybody needs it. Great. Much appreciated. Okay. I Abby, think, yes? How do you get onto the chat? I'm sorry, what was that? I can email it out. Yeah, it's this little, the, we're, he's dropping it in here, but I can put it in, I can shoot it in an email to you. Yeah. Um, okay, I think that's everything on my list. Um, does anybody have, I know this was a long meeting and I thank you for your patience. Does anybody have any last minute questions, concerns? <sighs> um, you know where to find us. Uh, this Cali stuff is certainly ongoing. I think you'll be hearing a lot more from us. Uh, we have a nice little board committee working on this. So if you want to join that, it's, not, it's open to anybody who's interested. You don't have to be a board member of Troy Hill Citizens. Um, you know, so we're just we're just looking for support as we get the message out. Um, otherwise, uh, we will see you at our next meeting. Uh, the next community meeting is going to be 
uh, June 14th. It's Wednesday, June 14th. So, um, but you can look for a newsletter. We're going to be sharing updates on our on our um, Facebook page about the Cali situation. This is ongoing, and uh, we want to continue to provide those updates as the city gives them to us. So, all right. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for board members on the call, if you can stay on, um, we're going to let some folks leave and then we'll get do a board meeting.